Hey guys, welcome back to Miss Allen's Creative Crayons. How are you guys doing? I hope that you're well. I have another book here for you today. It's called Let's Get Along and it's talking about tolerance. And this is a good time right now to discuss about tolerance. A lot of you guys are stuck at home and you've been around your family a lot. And it's okay to feel different feelings, even if they're not always good feelings. Um, some of you might be at home stuck all day and getting a little frustrated at uh, situations around you. Um, and that's normal. The thing is, you have to deal with it. And um, this book will teach you ways on how to be more tolerant. What does tolerant mean? Let's Google. I have Google at home. Let's ask her. Hey Google, what does tolerant mean? Here's the definition of tolerant. Showing willingness to allow the existence of opinions or behavior that one does not necessarily agree with. <laughs> oh, so what she means is, is that um, even though there are different people around you, you have to take in all those different personalities and accept them. Everyone is different. Everyone is unique. Remember, Miss Allen teacher used to always say, what does this mean? I feel happy. What does down here mean? Sad. And I taught you guys, no matter what grade you were in, I taught you that all teachers are different. Some teachers will reach this point a lot faster, and some will reach this point a lot faster. You have to be tolerant to their different personalities and act around that to make yourself happier and them happier too around you. So let's get started. This book is by, let's see who wrote it. <clears throat> Written by Pamela Hill Nettleton and illustrated by Amy Bailey Moshalharnd. <laughs> I tried my best. <clears throat> this is the front page. Looks like a computer. That's what we're doing. We're teaching online, our best way to teach online. And here's a guy <clears throat> sitting at his computer. He's like, hey, what's happening? I'm Frank B. Wise, advice columnist for kids. When I've got a problem, my friends and parents help me. I like to turn around and help someone else, like you. Do you ever get confused and wonder what to do next? That happens to everyone, even grown-ups. It's just a part of life, I guess. That's why I'm here to give you advice. <clears throat> Today, I'll be reading letters from kids like you about tolerance. Tolerance means seeing that your way isn't the only way. It means knowing that each person is different. And it's cool to be your own person. It's cool to let other people be who they want to be too. It sure would be boring a world if we all were the same, right? So read on and let's learn about tolerance. Sincerely, Frank B. Wise. Let's see what these kids have to write to him about. So here's a letter. Oh, look at that picture. Does that look familiar? Let's read. Dear Frank, I have to share a room with my sister. She drives me nuts. She is such a slob. Her clothes are everywhere. I can't even find the floor anymore. Which one of us has to move out? Abigail. So can you guess which one is Abigail? Yeah, this one. <clears throat> Dear Abigail, sharing a room is tough. I used to share a room with my little brother, Ben, 
and we fought all the time. He said my toys and books took up all the space. I got so mad when he used to shove, or sorry, I got so mad when he used my stuff without asking. Then our family bought a new house. Now Ben and I have our own rooms. I have enough space for my stuff, but I'm still kind of messy. And Ben keeps his room neat and always asks to borrow my stuff. I guess Ben and I each have different ways of doing things. Sounds like you and your sister too. You're neat. She's messy. She may never be as tidy as you are, Abigail, and that's fine for her. It probably bothers her that you are so neat all the time. Can you pretend there's a line down the middle of your room? Your half can be just as neat as you like it to be, and your sister can mess up her half all that she wants. Who knows? Maybe she'll see how nice your half is and start to pick up her socks. But don't count on it. Frank. So what did Frank suggest to do? He said that maybe Abigail can have her space and her sister can have her space. And she takes control of this space and she takes control of that space. Might work. <clears throat> Let's read another one. Look at the picture first. I wonder what she has to say. Dear Frank, I like my friend Patricia a lot, but I don't like the food her mom makes. It smells strange and has weird vegetables in it. Can I tell her mom to make something else for me when I spend the night? Sarah. What do you guys think? Well, let's see what Frank says. Dear Sarah, no way. Here's the deal. Patricia's food isn't really strange. It's just new to you. When Patricia's mom offers you food at her house, you should be polite and try it. Don't make a face or crinkle your nose. It's not okay to tell her her food is strange, but it is okay to tell her that it's new to you. My dad says that if you don't like how it tastes, you can always say something nice about how it looks. Here's a food tip from me. I used to hate fish. I mean, really, really hate it. My mom kept making it though, and she always asked me to try just one bite. After trying a lot of little bites over the years, something happened. I actually started to like fish. So watch out. What strange food today may be your favorite meal tomorrow. Who knows, maybe Patricia thinks that your favorite meal is gross and she'd rather eat dirt, but she might be too polite not to tell you that. Frank. So in other words, um, you don't, like we always say, don't, you don't, if you have nothing good to say, don't say it. It's better to be polite. If you don't like it, you just say, oh, that looks interesting, even though you don't want to try it. <laughs> okay, one more, guys. One more. Let's see. Okay, here's a good one. Look at this picture. <laughs> mm. Dear Frank, we live next door to the crabbiest lady ever. She hates our dog and she yells at us when our dog barks. The name is Boxer. She yells at us when we use the corner of her yard for third base. She yells at us all the time. I guess it would be wrong to throw an egg at her house. But she makes me so mad I wish I could. What could I do? Gina. Dear Gina, hold that egg. They taste so much better scrambled than scraped off of a house door. You sure sound mad at your neighbor. I bet she's mad at you too. 
Sounds like a little tolerance on both sides would be a good idea. The thing is, neither one of you owns the whole neighborhood. You share it. Your neighbor probably wants a little peace and quiet, and you want to play baseball in the yard. All you need is some extra room for third base. Poor boxer just wants to bark. Maybe it's time for you to take some action. First, talk this over with your parents. If they say it's okay, give this a shot. Walk over to your neighbor's house, but leave Boxer at home. Most people love cookies, so you could bring some to share with your neighbor. It's hard to be crabby when you're eating a cookie. Tell your neighbor you're sorry you guys bug her so much and ask her if you could work out a deal. Find out what times are best and worst for her and see if you and your friends could stick to a schedule that doesn't bug her. Next time you see your neighbor out in her yard, don't frown. You smile and wave instead. Frank. I was pretty lucky growing up. I did not have any crappy neighbors. So there are more stories in this book. Let's get along. There are lots of different stories, but I know this video is getting really long. So if you guys like this series, please give it a thumbs up and hope that you guys are well. Stay safe, stay tolerant of your parents, of your siblings, and hope that you guys are well. I miss you guys so much, but I'll be here by video for you guys. Take care guys. Love you. Bye. Bye guys.